Well. Hey, Jason, how are you? Not bad, Leo. How are you? I'm very well. Welcome to Call for Help. What can I do for you today? Well, um, I've recalled you uh, talking a few times about uh, root kits. Oh, yeah. And um, the time that I heard you speak of it, um, I tried some of the things you suggested. Yeah. And uh, when I was done, I was green. I didn't know what I was looking for. And um, I, I had the uh, test come up, and I just wasn't sure what to look for to know um, if I had one or is it there, is it not there. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a very good question. This all came up uh, about, oh, well, a few months ago now. Well, Sony uh, used a copy protection scheme that put a root kit on people's PCs. What a root kit is is a hacker technique that allows them to put software on your computer that the operating system and you can't see. It's completely invisible. So if, uh, if software is root kitted, you could do a directory all you want and you'd never be able to see the file. And if you hit Control alt delete to see the task manager, it won't show up in the task manager. It's effectively invisible. And yet, it's on there. Now, Sony did it because they didn't want you to know that they had copy protection on your machine. Uh, of course, people found out, and it turned out it was a very big embarrassment to Sony. And we at that time recommended, Steve Gibson, in fact, recommended uh, that everybody run a rootkit revealer. Now, the one that Steve recommended is from a company called Sys Internals. It's probably the one you use, Jason. It's absolutely free. And you need to run some special software. And what this software does is essentially duplicate the functionality of the operating system so that it can see these files. What we did find, though, as we ran it, here's another one, by the way. F-Secure makes one called Blacklight, which isn't free, but you can try for free for, uh, I think, 30 days. Um, what we found was it's not just Sony that's doing this. Yeah. We found a lot of other programs. In fact, well, we were kind of shocked. We ran it on one of the systems here, and we came up with like 30 or 40 root kits. Symantec is notorious for, and, and very popularly installed on systems. They, they use this technology for their secure delete function to really, really hide the files you delete so that nothing else can delete them. Right. Um, but it, it is essentially root kit technology. So and if so you run root kit revealer, it'll show up. Right, and there are some some uh, antivirus programs. Because Kaspersky uses it yeah. exactly, and so it's it's unfortunate that there are benign, I mean, many benign uses for this file hiding technology, which is this, which overlaps with definitely malicious uses. So, uh, did you, did you in fact, uh, Jason, find um, some rootkits on your system? Well, when I when I ran the uh, the program from Sys Internals. It came up with about 19 different things on the screen. Right. And, I, again, I really didn't know what I was looking for, so I didn't know if it was a root kit or if it just found some uh, deficiencies in, in, the, in the search. Right. Well, I don't blame you. Um, now, how can he tell? Is there any way to know, uh, Steve? The only thing I could suggest would be to maybe Google the, the stuff that it shows, that, that root kit revealer reveals, and see whether... Anyone's talking about it, whether it's known by the people on the net. I mean, there, unfortunately, there isn't a hard and fast rule that, that, that anyone can use that says, this, we know these things are bad, we know these things are good. But now, Rootkit Revealer has been around enough, and enough people have found stuff that there's a lot of dialogue on the Internet what where, is this? Where, where people have tracked it down and right. figured it out. Right. I think the Norton stuff, <clears throat> we could tell it was Norton because it said Norton And it was, it was in the Norton directory structure. Right. And right. it was pretty clear. Right. I think same with Kaspersky, but uh, th that's really what you need to do. Do you, do you have? Uh, can you tell when you look at it? Are any suspicions about where that stuff might have come from? Well, see that that um, I, I don't know. I think I mean I've since formatted my computer, yeah, and uh, obviously eliminated any problem that I had. The problem I was having was uh, excessive CPU usage, and I thought maybe it could well be. There. Could well be. Now that would even be that would be a really uh, uh, not benign use of a rootkit. That would be a hacker, <clears throat> and there are a number. If you go to rootkit.com, <laughs> you'll find a number of programs that hackers use to put stuff on your system and uh, and hide it. Uh, you know, they may be when you say un unusual CPU usage, they might put a uh, a mail forwarding program on there so that they can rent your machine out to spammers without your knowledge. They might put a FTP site on there so that they can secretly hide pirated software or, or porno or whatever on your system and, and offer it for download. So these things absolutely do happen. You probably were prudent to erase it, although I, what I'm hoping is that 
uh, well, I don't know if I'm hoping this. I hope it, <laughs> I hope it wasn't something benign because it, you did go to a lot of trouble to erase it. But I think that was a reasonably prudent if, thing. If he also reinstalled everything he had before on his reformatted machine and didn't get that stuff back, well, then he knows. Then it's an indication that something had crept in. Now, it is also the case that there are other false positives that are not either deliberate software or malware, there are some like broken keys which will accumulate in old Windows right. machines over time. And those will sometimes be shown up by Rootkit Revealer. They're registry and keys they're you're just, Yeah, they're yeah. just sort of just <clears throat> cruft. It's just debris. Well, I have, in fact, I've just been running Rootkit Revealer while we've been talking, Jason, and I, in fact, have that. It says data mismatch between Windows API and raw hive data. Right. That almost certainly is not a hacker. That's it's just, just registry dirt. It's dirt. It's a it's yeah. a credit up registry, and these things happen. And in fact, it is in the registry. It's in the uh, SQL Server uptime UTC uh, key of uh, of the uh, registry, and that's just that's 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 harmless. It's debris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I hope that the, you don't have a hacker uh, on your case. Uh, chances are you don't, Jason. I mean, a lot of time, a lot of times, certainly we, not we, now. we talk about this stuff uh, as a theoretical uh, threat, and, and certainly if you were a bank or somebody who had really precious stuff on your computer, you might be something to be worried about. But unless you've made a hacker mad, Jason, or you're running a bookie operation in the back of your house, uh, I think you probably didn't get hacked. And but, reformatting Windows is always a good thing to do. That's the same. You're not, you're not <laughs> running a bookie <laughs> operation in the back of there. He's laughing now. I'm wondering, <laughs> yeah, what are you up to in the back there, Jason? No, no bookie. Just kidding. So, uh, yeah, but you were right to be prudent. And that, it, whenever you find, uh, with any security program, whenever you find one of these positives, whether it's false or true positive, it's a great idea. Just Google it. That's where.